How's it going everybody? This video is going to be focused on Dolby Vision and what it does and do you need it. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I see people who believe Dolby Vision is supposed to be brighter. That's absolutely not the case. Uh, I see people who say certain TVs don't need it if they are brighter than other TVs. Again, not the case. So we're going to break down a real scene in a real movie and then we're going to go through the Spears and Munzel demo disc showing what Dolby Vision is actually doing on a G2 that is completely calibrated for both HDR 10 and Dolby Vision. So we're going to start off with Dolby Vision fully calibrated on the bottom right and HDR 10 fully calibrated on the left and then on the top right is HDR 10 with dynamic tone mapping. Now what you could already see in that first slowdown and you can see it more here as well is with Dolby Vision the brightness of the highlight is not as bright as the HDR10 on the left but you're getting more detail and then with dynamic tone mapping on the top that's the dimmest of the three because it's trying to tone map so much that it's reducing a lot of brightness however that's in a particular frame or scene where the brightness is more than what the TV is capable of here we can see Dolby Vision showing the most detail on the face HDR10 is clipping the cheeks a little bit and then dynamic tone mapping is really pushing the brightness on the face too much, really blowing it out. Dynamic tone mapping will also raise everything else, so the shadows in the back and whatnot are brighter than they're supposed to be. And then here we are with another slowdown. We can see again, dynamic tone mapping really has to pull these flames down a lot to show the detail, making them dimmer. HDR10 is clipping a lot, but making it brighter, whereas Dolby Vision is showing how it's supposed to be with the correct amount of detail and then pushing the brightness as much as it can for the detail that it shows and so it's kind of a in between the two uh, but at least with Dolby Vision you know what you're seeing is the amount of detail you're supposed to see whereas with HDR10 you don't know if it's clipping something that is supposed to be clipped or not and when it comes to details like this if you just have your one display that you're looking at without a comparison side by side detail that's not there not being shown you don't know if what's not there because you don't see it so with Dolby Vision it alleviates that out of your mind knowing that the detail you're seeing is the detail that was meant to be there and tone mapping isn't just about these super bright you know flames and whites here we just have bright yellow light hitting a face again and you see more detail in the Dolby Vision as even a scene like this can be clipped as seen on the left and really blown out as with the dynamic tone mapping. And if it were a different TV, each TV is going to tone map HDR10 differently. So one might be more aggressive tone mapping, so it would darken the highlights a lot more than this in order to show more detail. Another TV could just hard clip everything above what it's capable of, resulting in more loss of detail. So now if we switch over to Spears and Munzel, uh, change it up a little bit here. We got rid of the dynamic tone mapping and instead I put uh, Dolby Vision IQ with precision detail in its place. Uh, so now we're still comparing Dolby Vision calibrated on the bottom right with HDR10 calibrated in the middle left and the Dolby Vision IQ precision in the top right. And IQ precision, what it's trying to do is adjust the shadow detail mostly uh, to fit your ambient lighting in your room. Uh, so that your shadows are more visible during the day and it tries not to over brighten everything else to be inaccurate you can see here where the tree line is more visible but again it's still not accurate you know all HDR content is designed to be viewed in a very dark room and it is absolute and that's how it's supposed to be so those are what the accurate modes are um, but something like Dolby Vision IQ Precision can be used during the daytime to make shadow detail a little bit more visible uh, if you are watching Dolby content during the day. However, we do see that it also does manipulate highlights and stuff, which it really shouldn't be doing. All right, so in this particular demonstration, the Dolby Vision content is the 10,000 nit main grade of the content. On the left with the HDR10, that's the 1,000 nit version. And on the G2, I set it to hard clip for 1,000 nit content. The TV was capable of delivering 1,000 nit highlights, but Again, if we look here at this grass, we see more detail in the Dolby Vision and more color. And then something like this, you know, the sun is way different and completely blown out on HDR10. So a lot of times colors do need to be tone mapped as well. And it's not just super bright white highlights. 
So what this is demonstrating is that even if you have a bright TV, Dolby Vision still is beneficial in retaining and showing the proper amount of detail. And it should be that way on any TV that is properly able to show Dolby Vision correctly. And that's a issue with some of the previous TVs, but something like the Sony A95K and the LG G2, they do a really good job with Dolby Vision now. You know, this one, look at how much of that color is lost with the HDR10 because it's clipping it. You know, the grass here, you can see where it loses a lot of color with HDR10 as well. And then this rock, you lose a lot of that red saturation in it. So in previous videos about Dolby Vision, yes, you do lose a little bit of APL overall. However, previously it was just some of the TVs were not really able to properly do Dolby Vision correctly either. So the combination really made Dolby Vision content much darker than HDR10. However, with a TV that properly does Dolby Vision, the difference in overall brightness should be very minimal between HDR10 and Dolby Vision, and even that will depend on the tone mapping of the TV in HDR10 as well, because if it's aggressively tone mapping, then it will be dimmer than Dolby Vision could be. So when calibrated or done properly, they should look roughly the same as far as overall APL, but like in the spot right here, where HDR10 is clipping that yellow because the TV can't get the yellow that bright. Dolby Vision knows how much that it does need to tone map it so that you do see the detail that is there that you should be seeing. And then like here, you see the red and the orange a lot more saturated. Then with something like this, they're pretty much the same. And that's because Dolby Vision is able to read each part of what you're seeing and know how much to tone map or not to. On the content side of things with Dolby Vision, there is variances. There's a lot of different tools available to creators with Dolby Vision. Uh, their website lists details about a lot of them uh, if you want to check that out. But it doesn't mean that every bit of Dolby Vision content is going to use every tool that's available to them. They just use what they need or what they feel they need to achieve the look that they're going for. Now also consider that if you stream media content a lot, a lot of the big major apps such as Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and now even Amazon Prime or Dolby Vision. So Amazon Prime still has HDR10 and HDR10 Plus content, but they are starting to add Dolby Vision content. But the others, all HDR content on those is going to be in Dolby Vision. So if streaming content is very important to you or you watch a lot of UHD discs, um, not all of those are in Dolby Vision, but a lot of them are. So assuming that that matters to you as we look ahead to 2023 or newer TVs with the LG G3, the Sony A95L, those models should offer the best Dolby Vision to date. And that's major selling points to them, at least in my opinion. For me personally, those are the only two models that I'm interested in looking at for my main display for this year, specifically because of this. And now I'll briefly talk about Dolby Vision and gaming where it's less important because we do have HGIG or you can set parameters. However, that said, there are still gonna be cases where a proper Dolby Vision implementation in game mode will do better with the tone mapping and showing detail than even HGIG would. The problem with that is out of the box, no TV to date could do that. Like LG does have 4K 120 Hertz in Dolby Vision with VRR. However, their out of the box Dolby Vision game mode is like the Cinema Home preset where it's completely inaccurate. It way over brightens the EOTF and essentially I would not use it for anything unless it is calibrated. This could be an opportunity for Sony to one up LG this year with the A95L. And that's because they have moved to the Pentonic chip with the A95L so that it can do Dolby Vision at 120 hertz at the same time now. So if they actually implement a low latency Dolby Vision game mode on the A95L and they keep it as accurate as their Dolby Dark and custom mode, like Sony usually does focus on accuracy in those, if they do that for the Dolby Vision game mode as well, then that would be an advantage over LG with out-of-the-box Dolby Vision gaming performance. So do plan to see the G3 versus the A95L, uh, especially with Dolby Vision comparisons in the future as those TVs come out. And within the next few weeks, I should have the G3 and the S95C from Samsung to compare them directly, and I will be able to compare 
them with the G3 and Dolby Vision and the S95C using HDR10 or HDR10 Plus and see is Samsung missing out by not having Dolby Vision. So be sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for those videos as they come soon. I hope this video helped to explain the importance of Dolby Vision and why you know it is good to have and uh, I hope to catch you all in the next one. I thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good one. Thanks.